When was the last time you brought home some tech that really changed the way you use things? I mean, a new laptop is just a new laptop, right? A new phone, it's just a new phone. And even a new TV, well, bigger, cheaper, better, yeah, but it's still just a TV. But this, this has changed things. Okay, so what's going on here? It's sort of a YouTuber rite of passage at this point to review the Vava 4K Ultra Short Throw Laser Projector. It's also really fun to say. They sent me one to try out, been using it for about a month now before it goes back. Now, if you know anything about projectors, you've already noticed that I'm kind of not using it quite right. More on that in a second. Really, I kind of wanted this video to be less of a full review and more of a story about how I've been using this and really how the experience is different. It's a story about how cool a projector is and how I really want one and how you're probably gonna want one too. And it's also a story about how I'm probably not getting one anytime soon. And that's really a shame because, damn. All right, first the basics. So Vava is one of those companies that makes all kinds of things, right? Projectors, of course. Uh, they've got dash cams and USB hubs, baby monitors. I have a really cool little solid state drive from them I use. The projector is what we're here for though, right? So the first thing you need to know is that there are projectors and then there are projectors. You can get a cheap one for a few hundred dollars, but the resolution and maybe even more important, the brightness is gonna be in the low end. Or you can get something like LG's Cinebeam 4K projector, which runs about $6,000. Or, get this, Sony has a laser projector, $25,000. It's insane, it's nuts. So Vava's 4K laser projector falls on the low end of what I would say is the upper class of the spectrum there. It's $2,800. Now that's not nothing, but it's certainly not $6,000. It's definitely not 25 grand. So that's the price. Now the other thing you need to know is that this is an ultra short throw projector. Now what does that mean? A throw refers to a little bit of math that tells you how far the projector needs to be away from the screen that you're projecting on in order to make an image. Now this one is ultra short throw and that means it can be real close and it doesn't have to be on the other side of the room and make your living room look like it's the inside of a buffalo wild wings. Not that that's the worst idea in the world maybe. So in this case, the throw is really minimal. For a 100 inch picture, you need seven inches of distance. Now, other specs you'll care about, there's the 4K resolution, of course. It has HDR10 for HDR, a 1.5 million to one contrast ratio, and 2500 ANSI lumen, and that's the spec you wanna look for. That's the standard, so that you can compare this projector to other projectors. If it doesn't say ANSI, look for it and even more specs you need to know. So this thing's running Android. It's not running Android TV, it's running the non-googly version of Android. And to be honest, I don't even know what version. I don't care. That's because this thing has three HDMI ports in the back, one of them's ARC audio return channel, and plug in anything else, right? Uh, if you got Amazon Fire TV, use it. If you got Roku, use it. Apple TV, use it. Android TV, Nvidia Shield, use it. Any of that is gonna be better than what's built in on this projector. Also on the back, there are more ports for USB and audio and ethernet, but I tell you, I didn't even hook this thing up to the internet until I started recording this review just to make sure it didn't have updates or anything crazy. Just don't even bother, right? Plug in any sort of other streaming device that you have. All right, that's a lot. That's not even the important stuff, right? The important stuff is what is it like to use something this large? Now size matters for a whole bunch of things in life, right? And one of them is your television. It's actually kind of hard to describe what it's like to go from a 65 inch TV to, well, this. Come to think of it, I should probably go measure it and see exactly how big that picture is. All right, so we got about 120 inches and it really is more like, instead of just watching a movie at home on your TV, it's almost like being in the theater. There are also no bad angles here, which is really cool. So if I can see the wall, I can see what's going on. I can watch it from my kitchen. I can watch it from the dining room. I can see what's on the screen from outside, which means my neighbors can too. And yeah, I'm showing off a little. So setup was super simple. I literally just plugged everything in and it worked, right? I had to wiggle the base of the unit just a little bit to try to line things up as best I could that way. And then you can fine tune things in the settings and make sure all your corners lined up and all that stuff. Focus took care of itself, which is really cool, but you can also just adjust that if you need to. And that brings us to what was really the biggest game changer for me in this whole experience. Because having a projector is more than just having a bigger screen. For one, you're gonna want the room to be darker, almost certainly. I've got this pretty well lit for shooting this video, but most of the time we were watching the projector, I kept things pretty dark in here. Then there's a matter of sound. The Vava has a 60 watt Harman Kardon speaker set up inside, which is not awful actually. 
but it's not nearly as good as my Vizio surround sound setup I have here in the living room. The question then was what to do with the sound bar. It didn't sound good at all sitting behind the projector. I didn't want it sitting in front of the projector because then the projector was a little closer to the wall than I wanted and the picture wasn't quite as big. So for my purposes here, I put it on top, which isn't great. Obviously, I would probably want to mount it on the wall below the picture. Speaking of sound, this thing has a fan in it to get the hot air out. And you will hear the fan, right? It's not a deal breaker for me, but it is noticeable. And if I'm sitting there at that computer working, I can feel the hot air coming out the side of the thing. Just something to think about as you're rearranging your setup. And finally, there's the matter of the screen. That's what I was alluding to earlier when I said I'm not quite doing this quite right. So there are all kinds of screens you can get, right? You can get something that's permanent and just sits there on the wall. You can get screens that come down from the ceiling. You can get screens that come up from the floor. Or this is how I would do it if I really had my druthers. I would redo this wall entirely, right? Uh, first, I would get drywall that is straight. And actually, you maybe have noticed that top right corner there, it's got a weird wave to it. It's because the drywall is not actually flat. Uh, and yeah, you notice. Uh, the drywall I have is textured as well, and that comes through, especially on light pictures. And then I would use an ambient light reflecting paint. So ALR, it's a, a standard in screens, and really it makes it so the room maybe doesn't have to be quite as dark and everything just looks better. So you can get that in a paint, or you can get it in the screen itself. Definitely something to look at. So me, I don't think I'd want a big blank screen laying there, you know, most of the time when the thing's not on. So I would redo this entire wall. It looks so great not having a TV out there in the living room unused. That's how I would do it. So the bottom line here, using a projector isn't like having just a larger television, right? It really changes the entire experience in your living room. And something like the Vava 4K laser projector makes that more attainable for us common folk. Now, a $2,800 projector is not nothing. That's still expensive, but it's also not $6,000 like LG or 25 grand like Sony. And if I was gonna spend that kind of money to get that size picture, that's probably right about the sweet spot for me. You take that and some kind of screen, uh, you know, you can get something decent for not a ton of money. Say, you know, set yourself a budget, maybe four grand and you've got the projector and a good size, good quality screen, all done. And I would argue that if I'm gonna have something this large in my living room all the time, I'm gonna spend them extra money to make it look good. Again, don't worry about what's built into the projector and the Android build and all that. Just plug in Roku or Fire TV or Apple TV or even Android TV. Just plug in anything else, you're gonna be good to go and this thing is gonna serve you really, really well. And it's gonna do so for a long time too. I know we're used to asking about uh, like projector bulb hours and stuff. It's a laser projector, right? We're talking years here, so you're definitely gonna get your money's worth. So that's it for the Vava 4K Ultra Short Throw Laser Projector. Still love saying that. If you got any more questions on it, go find me in the comments. Hit me up on the socials. That's it for now. I'm gonna go watch some TV. See you later.